Hello, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to learn more about Dell Precision T3620 workstation memory upgrades and how to properly configure the system. For starters, the Dell Precision T3620 workstation has one CPU socket. It's an LGA1151. It takes Intel E3-1200 V5 or V6 series CPUs, or you can use Intel Core I3, I5, or I7 series CPUs. There are four DIMM slots. It accepts DDR4 memory, and there's two types of memory that you can use. You can use ECC unbuffered, which is your more traditional server module, or you can use non-ECC unbuffered, which is your more traditional desktop module. Both of them actually max out at the exact same, 64 gigabytes. You can do four 16 gigs at uh, 2666 megahertz. And again, same thing for uh, non-ECC. Uh, it's four uh, 16 gigs at 266 megahertz. You can do uh, a number of different speeds, all the way as low as 2133 megahertz, 2400 megahertz, or 266 megahertz, as we just discussed. So let's go ahead and open it up. We'll show you how to properly configure it, how to load it, a little bit more about the DIM channels. Uh, but before we do, uh, I want to get my ESD gear on because you want to make sure you don't uh, shock the machine and damage any parts unnecessarily. If you're at home and you're, this is your uh, more of your desktop don't uh, worry about it if you don't have ESD. One of the things that I recommend is just try not to do on carpet um, and maybe go touch some metal, a piece of copper or something like that uh, to try to discharge your hands a little bit before you get in there. So we'll be right back. And we're back. Now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. So first things first, just want to pop this latch open and this top will come off. It kind of has a hinge for lack of a better term. Uh, I will note that um, you want to keep it um, when you put it back in, you're going to put these right in here. So I'll show you that at the end. So I always like to have it face in the same way to make it easier when I put it back. Um, anyhow, now that we're in, you can see that there's uh, one CPU. Currently, there's a heatsink fan combo on it to keep it cool. You can see our video card, and there are four DIMM slots, uh, and there are also uh, two slots over here for uh, for hard drives. Um, as far as the RAM is concerned, um, as we have discussed, there's four DIMM slots. There's two memory channels. The memory channels are color coded so that you can see uh, white is the start of the memory channel, black is the second slot. So as it's configured right now, uh, you'll note that uh, the two DIMMs are in the two white slots. That's the proper way to configure it. So if you only had uh, two DIMMs and you weren't maxing it out with four DIMMs, uh, you would want to put it in DIMM slot one and DIMM slot two. And they are labeled on the motherboard uh, to make it easier for you. Uh, and the reason for this, in case you're wondering why, is you just want to have a proper uh, balance across your load. It's just load management for your memory. Um, you get more out of it as far as um, uh, putting them in different channels. If you were to put them both in the same channel, uh, you're just not maximizing the performance. So it's basically just from a performance standpoint. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. We're actually uh, removing some 8 gigs, loading these up with four 16 gigs to max them out for a local customer. So whenever I'm removing modules, one of the things that I like to note, um, if you just push this tab, sometimes the DIMM will just come flying out. So I like to take one of my hands and just kind of put it over it so it doesn't go shooting out. Um, and even if you're not worried about the memory, let's say it's an older 2 gig or something like this, um, you, you still need to worry about it potentially damaging another part in the machine itself. This tab's a little stuck right here. You can tell this memory's been in here for a while. There we go. All right, so then simply just take it right out. So. We'll get these removed, and voila, just like that, we got them out. So now we're going to actually load them up with some new Samsung modules that we just got in. Um, and this is kind of important in general. Uh, whenever you're putting memory in, um, you need to pay attention to, uh, there's a notch right here in the middle, also known as a key. Uh, and you have to pay attention to this for a number of reasons. One, uh, this prevents users from putting in the wrong modules. So if you were to put in, uh, let's just say, a DDR3 module into this machine, it physically wouldn't fit. If you were to put in a DDR2 module, module it physically would not fit. Uh, but it's also important because the, mod, uh, the key is not perfectly centered. So if you were to flip the module the wrong way, you could do one of two things, damage the module or potentially damage the motherboard, neither of um, which you would like to have happen. So uh, we're going to go ahead and load it up. One of the things I like to do before I start loading is make sure that all of my tabs are fully open so I'm not fumbling around with that when I'm trying to put the modules in. So we're going to go ahead and just start popping them in. I need to line it up properly. okay? And I always like to note for consumers right now, you can see I've taken my hands off. It's, it's fully in there, but it's technically not in there. It's not fully seated. So what you really need to make sure is you hear this click. 
Okay, you hear that click? That click lets you know that the module has been fully inserted. Um, too often do we have uh, consumers who think that they've run into an issue with a failed module and really uh, nine times out of ten it's just a seating error. Uh, very common, um, you know, even uh, experts can do it. It's, uh, you know, just something that happens all the time. So uh, one of the things we always tell customers is to rotate their modules around just to make sure that they have everything properly seated. And you can hear every time a nice little click sound. So again, just to make sure everything is uh, in properly. So I mean, in a matter of you know no time, we did that in just a couple of minutes. Uh, you can you know upgrade this machine to max out the performance, and you don't have to be a computer technician. You can be an everyday you know person who just wants more performance out of your desktop. I like, you know that's it's very easy to do this. Uh, so don't be worried if you're at home and you're thinking I don't know if I can do this. It's very easy, I promise you. So um, and and like I said, in a matter of minutes, it's done. So um, thank you guys for stopping by. I'll show you how to close it up, and uh, we'll call it a day. So uh, as we kind of discussed, you just want to line these back up. And I personally like to lift this. It kind of helps with just getting it back down. So just like that, we're done. Well, thanks again for stopping by to learn a little bit more about memory upgrades for the Dell Precision T3620 workstation. If you have any questions or you need any upgrades for yourself, please feel free to reach out to sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. And if you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, smash that subscribe button down below. Thanks again and take care.